welcome to my tutorial um it's wasting technology so today we're gonna be talking about objects and array so the clash between objects versus array so let's get started you know um back those days we do use um constant um variables to save data we use let to save data and we use var to save data so and we notice that it's only one data we can save for instance i can say name and i can set it to oh i can say number let me put it that way number and i can set it to three and if i i'm going to log out that number i will only have three there in the console so if you see it's only three and i cannot save another number so if i try to come here and maybe i want to add five and seven you see <laughs> so <laughs> you see what they're telling me unexpected number so javascript created an object or primitive object known as array and we still have what is called the object which have many features that can not only store one data but can store multiple data. So, firstly, the array. An array always come with a square box. So I can assign a constant number of sum to a square box. So I might just decide to say one comma two three okay let me get rid of this comma then i can even spell the third one three so i have two integers and a string i can even set the fourth one to a boolean to row so you can see so I can save data like this multiple data in just a, a, a single constant variable number and if I console log this number it holds all those value so it's not wholly going to show me it's not only going to show me one or three but it's going to show me the three values so now if I want to check what kind of um, data type is this, okay, let us try um, type of type of. So if you run this, probably you're gonna see an object. You're gonna see an object, and it's displaying an object. But actually, this uh, from a native code. From native um, this thing it's considered as getting its um, its root from an object but if we actually want to check what data type is number what we are going to do is we are going to call array which is the name of the object that is telling us then we're going to say dot so when you put dot we're gonna say is array so this is part of the object so this is a class and this this other one here is an object object from that class so if we put that and we'll put our num there and run this and it's going to set it to true that actually 
norm is an array so we can see through there so if i change our data tab maybe i put i delete this and put four there and run this you see we have false there so let me try that with a coily braces so let me see what we have we have false there then let me put a square bracket notation so and we have true so for an array we must always have it in a square bracket we must always have it in a square bracket then the next one is building javascript objects so let us try what's an object an object the difference here is um the coily braces so this is simple an object this is an object so to know an object always have a coily braces so you can set in as many information you want to set in your um, object so for instance I have name and I can set the name to uh, let me put that I can set it to wisdom Isaac so I put a comma to separate it then I have an H so I can set that to 20 and so on but now you can see this is different from what we did previously so if you see this this is an object so I'll, I'll just change the name to OBJ object so I'm gonna delete this I'm gonna delete this so that's it now you can see an object so an object always have what we call the property properties are example this name you see here and the age you see here they are known as properties then the wisdom Isaac is the value 20 is the value I can even change this it does not only accept strings you can also set it um, to integers like 20 like this you can see that so this is an object so I've given one for an object and one for an array so let's console log our object and see what's going to display on our console log so you can see we have an object it has signified that this is an object like capital object with a name which is wisdom and age which is 20 so we're gonna put the two there so let me create one constant again then let me call array array so we have the two there so equals to then our square bracket so I can put one I can put two then I can put three which is a string a string so you can see that we have objects and we have an array so now if we want to access data accessing data on an array and on an object in an object we use the properties with a dot notation or a bracket notation to access data but in array we use the index to access data so let us start from array so if I for instance I want to access 
um, I want to access number two in an array, we are going to use the index number. So if you are counting, you are counting from this point. So one is index zero, two is index one, then this three here is index two. So count zero, one, and two. Zero, one, and two. So that is the total number. So if, for instance, I want to access, I will just call array, array, then I put our square brackets, then put in their index number. So I want to access number one, I just put in zero there. So run that. So if we run that, you can see we have number one there. I want to access three there. I put the index number, which is two. And if you check it, you see we have three there, T-H-R-E there. But if it is an object and we want to access an object, so to access an object, you use the property name. So you can either use um, um, name with a dot or a bracket. So let us try it with a dot first. So if we say object, I want to access the name and I'll say dot name. If I run that, you see we have wisdom Isaac. Then if I remove this and put dot age, I expect the age to come out. So you see 20 there. So you can see that. So you can use um, um, the dot notation and the property to access um, an object. You can also use a square bracket to access an object. So I can just come here, a square bracket, then I put a, a quote, double quote, or single quote, then I put the name there, N-A-M-A. So if I don't want to use a dot notation, so if you run this, you see, we still have Wisdom Isaac there. And if we do the same to H, we do the same to H and run this, we'll see how 20. So object uses dot and square bracket notation in accessing its data. And why? was the um square bracket introduced for instance if we have properties that have spaces example i can put full name full name here and if i put dot full name like this with a space and run that you see that there is an error unexpected identifier is an error there but the bracket becomes handy whenever we want to the square bracket becomes handy whenever we want to assess um especially information our properties that have spaces so our property oh sorry um full name i mean name so you can see that so when I run I'm coming okay I need to put these two in uh, a quote so let me run that so you can see we still have wisdom Isaac so whenever we have a space in between we need to insert it inside a quote for us to have access to it so you can see that I can also insert our um, property inside a quote I can even insert the h2 inside a quote 
so if I add this let me insert that in a quote then let me call the each So if I run this, we expect to have the same result. You see, we have 20. So now, that is for the objects and array. Now, the next thing again we're going to know, or so ought to know, is what we call multidimensional arrays. Multidimensional arrays. So for instance, I'm going to get rid of the... So multi-dimensional arrays is when we have an array inside an array. So for instance, this is an array, then inside it I still create another array. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to call this um, number one, comma, I can put um, wisdom there, then that is for the first array. So inside it, I still create another array. So I can call this number two, comma. I can put a string there, and I call that Isaac. Then I can create again the last one, and I can call this number three. then inside a double quote and i can put that oko so if i get rid of this you still have our information so this is what we call a nest array sorry a, a multi-dimensional array so if you run this we expect to see all our information you see we have array 2 array 2 array 2 so array 2 means here there is two data inside each of this array then this 3 means this is the overall array so you can see that sorry let me put off put my phone on flight mode okay so you can see that so in a big array we have three arrays inside so this is called multi dimensional arrays and if for instance i want to assess data in this arrays it's very simple so to assess data in these arrays i can just say maybe i want to assess isaac you no know, the first array the index there is 1 oh sorry 0 the second array, the index is 1, and the third array, the index is 2. So I want to assess Isaac. I will go for through the first array, which is 1 and wisdom, then to the second array, which is 2 and Isaac. So 2 and Isaac, the second array is 1. So I'm going to put in the this thing, then I, I drop inside it. I can put 1 there. So if I put one, it's going to display two and Isaac for me. So when I run that, it's supposed to see two and Isaac, which is what we have. Then I can still go over again to add um to assess the Isaac. I can add one again. So two there is index zero then isaac is index one so you can see this is it so this is how we assess multi-dimensional arrays so you can see we have only isaac on our console log so now the next one we need to talk about is multi-dimensional objects multi-dimensional objects so as we also have array in array, we also have objects in objects. So for instance, um, 
I have uh, I have um let me use um, let me see what I can use okay so for instance I have a, a room hmm? so a room number room a room then I can set this room to room one that's the name of the room now I can put um, department so maybe let us assume that this room has department so now the department we have here um, let me just call it, um, let me give it another array so you can see we have another array so I can just call um, 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 toilet so toilet let's assume we have one toilet um, bedroom bedroom so let me give that a string can put that to two bedroom um, I can put um, let me add something there um, appliances or let me put color just looking for how to make things simple so I can just put in there um red okay let me create another object again so it looks a little bit complicated so we have number one there sorry we have red red and number two we have blue so let's stop here so a room this room has um, is known as room one and the department inside it we have the toilet we have the bedroom so um, and we now have colors which is one color and two colors so for instance um, I want to assess the information we have in this multi-dimensional arrays how are we gonna do that so I'm gonna call the objects so which is this object we have here so I want to assess the for instance I want to assess the bedroom so I can start object dot department so the department then after the department I can put dot bedroom so if we run this you can see we have two bedrooms so if for instance I still want to access my color I can get rid of this and put color there 
can put color there and run it and you see color is an object another object again which has one set to red and two set to so if i want to access the two i can just put dot two there so you see it's telling me so to rectify that i can just put that let me see so let's run that and see you can see we have blue there so see whenever we use a number in our object we know we need to use our um our box for it we need to use the box for it so that is for multi-dimensional arrays now the next thing again we're gonna be learning is nested arrays and nested objects so i'm going to explain what is nested array and nested object so that's what i'm going to explain now now what is a nested array and what is a nested object a nested array is when you have an object inside a um, array so for instance um this is my array so I'm going to delete everything we have here. So inside this, I am going to create an object inside. So I can just come over here and press enter. So you can see that so we have a coily basis inside an array so i can see name name is set to duke so I can put ID is set to one. So I can put a comma there and a comma here, and that settles it. And copy this. So I come over here. So I'm gonna paste that so let me close this so I can change this to Solomon so I can change this to Solomon so you can see that so I can set the ID to 2 Let's see add this and you can still come here and add this now this is what is called a nested array so I can come in here and I want to assess my data So we have array a r r dot then I can just call in instead of putting dots because we are not dealing with I've told you that um we use index to assess array so I can just put one there and we expect to see Solomon to appear because that is number one index so you see we have an object named solomon and id is set to three 
so i can use from this point i want to access only the name alone i just put dot name so if we run that you see we have solomon there so this is known as a nested a nested array so what about a nested object so if for instance we we'll come over here object is nested object when we have um i think the array is inside so i can just come here and say um name name i can set that to Solomon then I can still continue further and come over here and say hobbies hobbies then I can create an array So I can just say coding I can just say praying and I can say mentoring so whichever one so if for instance i want to assess um what we have there i can simply say what we have on top there the name of our object is obj so let's check that obj then I can just do it dot hobbies. So I think we have hobbies there. So if I run that, I expect to have an array. So we have coding, playing, and mentoring. So if I want to assess each of these elements in this array, each of the elements in the array and I want to assess it I can just put this and assess maybe I want to assess I want to assess praying or oh, sorry I want to assess mentoring I can just come in here and put two there and we expect to have mentoring I think my mentoring have a space there okay so that is for the um, assessing nested array and nested object so i've said it that we assess an array using index and we also assess object using dot and we have talked about assessing multi-dimensional arrays and multi-dimensional objects and nested arrays and nested objects so we can also assess um objects or arrays with variables and how can you do that so for instance i can say i can come over here and say um, let's value let value equals to two so I'll come over here and remove to and set in value there. So when I set in value there, I expect to have the same output as the previous one. So we still have mentoring there as the previous one. The same thing is applicable to our um, array too. So I want to use the value 
I can just come here and see um, I want to assess Duke I'll just see Ari Ari then I come in there and set in value so and that is it we are good to go so when you run that we have our undefined so why is it undefined it's undefined because i think the so uh, we don't have anything like two there in our index because after duke duke is zero and solomon is one so we don't have two there so i'm gonna change that to value then reset this maybe to zero so let me change this to zero so let's run that and you see we have name duke and id one so we have assessed an object and an array using a value um a variable so We can also delete we can also delete from objects and also delete from arrays so for instance I want to remove a property from an array so I'm going to log out our array I'm going to log our array out so that you see the information we have here so for instance You can see we have to one is id duke and the second the second one is solomon you can see the two there so and i want to i want to de delete one of what we have there so we have different methods we apply for that for example we have the dots we have the pop so we're gonna see the pop is used to remove the last element so it's gonna remove Solomon objects from the array so when you run that let's see that and you can see it has removed Solomon objects from the array so that is what this pop is holding so if we now want to print out console log the the we want to log out the main information we have there so I say log so if I want to log out array you see array is going to be only Duke that should be there so when you see this you click on this you see we have ID one name Duke so what was removed what was pop out was so this alone array dot pop is holding the value of solomon so if we want to recheck our this thing again what we only have there should be what should be duke and id one that is what we have in our array but the value of this pop here is holding so i can maybe i might want to remove it and save it in another variable so i can just remove this and remove this so if i run this i expect to see the value that is remaining in our array which is id1 and duke that is what is remaining okay next is we have the shift the shift will remove so the shift is going to remove 
from the first element so I want to remove from the first element so if we check it you see we have ID 3 here and name Solomon you can see so the first element which is Duke is removed and what is left is Solomon that's what is left in our array so you can use the deleted objects from this array dot shift and do whatever you want or you can let go of it but this is what is remaining in our array so now that we have all this the next thing is if for instance we want to add something to our array so I can put what is known as one is known as um on shifts so on shift I can just say So you can see on shift is adding the value of one to our array so the first one is a string one the second object there so let me see if i can zoom this out the second one we have there which is this is an object and the third one is an object so we have duke duke and number one so i can even change this I can change what is inside there. I can put her and I can still run that. So you can see. So if you zoom it, we have help, we have Duke, and we have. So I can even try to insert an object inside there to see. So let me try inserting another object. So I can put name. And I can set the name to wisdom. And put a comma. And I can put ID. ID. And I can set id to 5 and i can run that you can see so we have the three objects there you can see the three objects so one is holding id 5 name wisdom second one is holding id 1 name duke and the third one is name id 3 name solomon so you can see that so that is for the on shift we also have other methods like splice um, slice I mean we have push uh, push is going to add to the beginning of your this thing so if I use the push there for instance let me try push so let's see what push is going to do so push will add the wisdom to the bottom so I expect to see wisdom at number so you can see ID 5 name wisdom instead of it to be number one here. So Duke is number one. So and that is it. So you can see that is for deleting arrays and adding arrays. So if for instance we want to do the same, we want to do the same to an object. We want to do the same to an object. So, for instance, we'll come over here. This is our object. So I'm going to give no space. So, I come over here. Um, in our object, I want to delete hobbies. So, I can just click delete. Delete. And what am I deleting? Objects. Dot. Hobbies. So I've delete hobbies. So I can come I can come over and just say um 
log i want to log out my information so i can just log out obj so let's run this and see what we got sorry i think there is a mistake somewhere we need to rectify that okay which this place so it's supposed to be a square bracket okay good so let's run our code and see so we have only name and that's what we have in our object so if for instance i want to delete one of the specific stuff there i can remove the this thing i can put a square bracket and i put we have zero one two so i can just put so there is going to remove mentor let me see whether it works so let's check our array so we have only coding and prayer we don't have mentoring so you can see how we delete this one of the functions introduced in es6 so that is for an object so let's move on to the next one so i'm just gonna uncomment this okay so for instance we might want to update properties in our array or in our object so i can just come in here and put each I can put objects dot h you know that h is not there and i can set it to maybe a string um i can put 66 and i'm gonna run that so let's see what we have you can see we have name Solomon, we have hobbies with the three array and we have age with 66. So you can see that that is for updating properties in object. So the next thing again we need to learn is preventing mutation in object. So if, for instance, I want to prevent changes in my object, for instance, now, I, I deleted this. Let me see that. So I deleted this and I added object and this. So if we run it, we can see all of those changes we have made. We added H and we also delete this. But I want to prevent those changes from happening. I can just come over here and add and add objects objects dot freeze so I'm gonna freeze our object so you're just gonna have O B G so I freeze that so let us see if our changes will still be applied after being freezed so i think it's still applied so let me let me move this from here sorry i want to pull this out control x so let me come over here and paste it here run it and see so you can see i freeze the object so all those changes are not applied so hobbies is still there and name is still there you check we still have coding praying and 
you can see that so most of those things except the adding of property I was unable to add property but I was able to delete so you can see so if I don't want to update a property I can use the freeze to freeze so the only thing it cannot hold withhold is the deleting of property it cannot withhold that it cannot change that or it can the freeze cannot freeze that but everything in our object is freezed so I hope we have gotten that so let us try something special if for instance um, I want to freeze dot hobbies let me see if the changes will be applied to dot hobbies if we freeze it so okay so it's apply why is not affecting the this thing is because we we freeze it as an object but the array is not free so we need to freeze the array too so we can say freeze object dot hobbies and we can come over here and so put um let us copy this and paste this here and freeze our object too so when we freeze it you see you can see everything is freeze so including our array our array is complete coding prayer method and age is not added to our object so I freezed everything totally so this is one of the features we have in ES6 so the next thing is using the structuring in assigning to extra value from objects so we want to learn how to use the structure so for instance the structuring is another way of assigning a new variables or a new value or yeah let me just call variable a new variable name to an object so for instance um, I'm gonna create um, I want to assess each of the information so I let me just say const so I'll just say const then I can just put a destructure for example the new name I want to assign to them or okay first of all let us assess it so I can come here put a curly braces there and I can put a name then I can put comma and I can put hobbies so you can see that so I can say it's equal to our object so you can see that so if I still want to call it I still call it the same so if what of if I put new name new name new name and new hobbies and I want to access the new name I can just say object dot new name so when I have object dot new name, uh, let me console log that. So I'm just gonna copy this. I'll cut it from here, and I'll come here. I'll delete all this because I'm not freezing anything. I'm not deleting anything. So I'll just come here and paste it there. So paste it there let's run and see what we get so we have on the fine on the fine 
so let me see where we are making mistake so that we rectify that okay so I don't need to put objects there um, I'll remove this object and just put new name there sorry so I'll run that and you see we have Solomon there so instead of going through the rigor so I can just come here and just put hobbies there hobbies and hobbies is undefined so okay sorry um new hobbies i don't know what's wrong with me <laughs> i don't know what's wrong with me so we have new hobbies new hobbies so we expect to have whatever that has been assigned to hobbies so you see we have coding prayer and mentoring so you can see this this structure i'm assigning so if I want to call it so instead of going through the rigor of you saying for instance of me saying let me uncomment this out so going into the rigor of me saying const const then now say um, new name new name is equals to now come and put objects object dot name so you can see that you know that if we console log new name we will still have the same thing that we have which is Solomon but this is a very handle handy way of doing that so let me uncomment this and bring this back so when we run this we still have our Solomon there so this what is known as destructuring so for objects we also have the structure for objects so for instance I will come to this place where we have array then I get rid of this array then I'm gonna put an, a square box so for instance we have a comma and we have B oh, shit. so we have a we have B you see this a and B they are not inside any code so let's try accessing so if I just come and say con I just put lock yes. and put a there so if we run we expect to see Duke there you see it's giving us an object Duke and ID so if I remove this and put B we expect to see Solomon there sorry we expect to see Solomon there so let's run that and you see we have Solomon there so that is for destructuring that is for destructuring please don't forget to like and subscribe if you are enjoying and you're also understanding what I'm explaining to you please don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe so now um, we have done the structuring in um, objects and we have done the structuring in array so the next thing we're gonna do is spread operators we're gonna be using spread operators in our array so what of for instance we have multiple data so let me add let me let me get rid of this so I want to get rid of this totally then 
I want to add I want our array to contain numbers so our array should contain numbers for example 1 2 3 4 5 and I want to use the speed operator so for instance now if we run this code out of all this we have we know that we console log b we expect two to show up so i can just come here and you see i console log b and two is showing up so if i do for a we expect one to show up if i run that i expect one to show up you can see we have one there so if for instance uh I have a spread operator, spread operator, we have three dots, and I'm going to call it um, C, or yeah, let me call it array, oh sorry, let me correct that, so I'm going to call it three dots, and array, ARR, so if I console log array, you know that A stands for 1, then B stands for 2. Therefore, this spread operator is going to carry the remaining value, which is 3, 4, and 5. So if I put array in a console log and run that, so you see, We have three, four, five. So if I I come over here again, then I I want to log out. I want to log out E. I want to log out B. So if we run that logging out B, you see we have two here, and we can still log E out. dot log and we have a there so we we'll still have one down there so you can see so you can use this destructor to arrange rearrange to rearrange your values so you can use it to rearrange your values so for instance I have I have three here and I have two here and I have one here and I have five here and I want to rearrange my values you can come over as simple as you just calling this array so you can just get rid of this So, to do this, you can just put your spread operators. Sorry. So, you can just set array. Then, you set array 1. sorry array zero you can set it to and let us see array let me say array zero one two three four so you can try four so let me see how it looks like so if for instance I want to change that to 5 or 5 to 1 I don't know if it's gonna work but just trying it so we haven't console log our output so that's why nothing is showing our console log so let's log out our output so I can just put in array 
so sorry for that sorry so if I run that I expect to have my output So you can see we have one here we have three we have two we have four so you can even do it directly directly instead of putting four you can set it to one two three or whatever so you can see the spread operator using an array so that is the importance of array and um, um, what is it called again importance of array and objects so you can also have what we call using the spread operator in solving issues so for instance if you look at this if you look at this um, thing we have here so let me get rid of this and just call this array now for instance we want to look for the maximum value in this array what is the maximum value in this array so I will just add 40 here and I can add 33 here so this is an array of random numbers and I want to look for the maximum number in this array normally I should say array right then okay maximum number let me console log that so let me put it in the console log oh, before okay log let me log it out so we have math here so these are math dots I'm gonna call max. Max is going to look for the multi maximum number in our array. So if I put in array inside here and run that, you see that we have not a number. Sorry, let me get this out. Let me log this out. Or let me remove this completely. So when you run that you see that we have not a number NEN stands for not a number that means array is not a number which is not supposed to be so so the only way you can solve this issue is to use the word dot apply say so we use dot apply and run this can see is giving us an infinity so okay how can we solve issues like this how can we solve issues like this to solve issues like this is by calling our operator calling our operator actually the apply also solves the problem but why is it calling infinity because um it, we have not set we have not set the starting point we have not given it where to start from so that's what we are about to do in this place so we are just going to put after this apply we are going to add and now and a comma so let's try this so you can see that the, it prints out the maximum number which is 40 and you can see this code is too long but it will be handy if we only use math.max and why is it like that because of the brackets there this bracket we have here so to make it look handy we we'll remove this 
remove this we will remove the apply there and we're going to add a spread operator dot 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 at the back of that and we are going to run it and if you run it and you see we still have 40 as our outcome so the spread operator adding the three dots have solved the issue have solved the issue so now that's for array and that's for object. so in our next class we'll be talking about class and constructor so um a class creating a class is just um a place where you um put all your objects together so you know that this object is just one object so in a class you can create as many objects so we are not just dealing with one person one name or one hobbies now we are dealing with multiple persons multiple names multiple objects so that's what a class does for you so you, please don't forget to like and subscribe my channel please smash the like button please and also comment if you have any questions you want to ask so thank you and there and many of my videos there you can check my playlist you see many of my videos and god bless you thank you